Shenanigans, working stiffer than mannequins. Vader time like a mannequin. Mega powers, I'm savaging. Peep the babbling, got him shook off the verbal acumen. I'm the main event, meaning nobody coming after him. The topics we be tackling, ankle locking and tapping them. I hate seafood, but I might throw the Boston crab on him. Uh, you know sometimes it gets heated. Uh, you know sometimes it gets heated. And welcome back, everybody, to Heated Shenanigans Podcast. The only podcast bringing you the heat each and every single week. Mike, the owner of the People's Towel, is back alongside your other host, Scott, here today. And we're diving into some more Vince McMahon news. Mike? It's it's a Vince-heavy week, man. And uh, we have a report uh, from Sean Ross. Scott, Sean Ross. Sap. Yeah, got it. <laughs> I had a brain fart there for a minute from Fightful. And uh, so apparently there was a meeting with Vince, and uh, it went a little something like this. So WB held an employee meeting in Stanford today with Ari Emanuel, Vince McMahon, and Nick Khan. Ari also introduced his daughter, Ashley, and noted she works for WWE now. McMahon referred to Ari as his boss and said that the company had stagnated, and this deal was to get them to the next level. Now, Scott, prior to this deal, Vince had been touting, and the company as a whole had been touting their year-over-year growth for the last three years. But apparently something happened in that last month, and things just went down, because apparently the company was in the crapper, according to Vince. Yeah, Vince was allegedly sleeping with other women not named Linda McMahon. Mmm, you think it's all connected, huh? You're gonna tie it all together? Go ahead, make the picture for them. The, the company was not plateauing. They were doing record business. The, this was part of Vince McMahon's scheme to get back into power. He held his company hostage. Mm. He forced their hand. He got himself back in to facilitate a new TV deal and the selling of the WWE. All right, he's done that. Then why hasn't he stepped down? Why is he still involved in the decision-making process? Because... Vince still has all the power. Whether we want to admit it or not, whatever smoke screen they put out there, Vinny Mac still calling the shots backstage. Clear, That's clearly. Clear. Like. And I think he uh, said, you know, clear. Try to make it clear that Ari Emanuel is his new boss because you know he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to be perceived publicly that he's still running things. But very clearly, it seems like that is the case. But, um, I mean, there's a possibility he's not going to be running things for too much longer if things go the way the government want them to go. Well, speaking of cases, uh, yeah. Vince is facing some severe allegations here from the uh, the federal government. Indictments. He loves indictments. More of them are coming for Vince. And ties to findings with Donald Trump. They've been friends for many, many years. And uh, that... We're not going to get into politics on this podcast, but that's set aside. Vince has himself in hot water, maybe by association, from what reports are. Again, nothing has been confirmed that Vince is guilty of any wrongdoing outside of the court of public opinion. But we'll see what those new allegations... I mean, they can't be good. Absolutely not. I imagine that the longer he pushes this, pushes this off with back surgeries and company mergers, they're just stacking up evidence. Is my assumption, and he's just trying to push it off as long as he can, so he can stack up as much money as he can to try to pay off whatever he can, so he cannot go to jail. Is my assumption. That's a pretty astute take. He sells WWE to make the money to buy himself a second chance. To note, this wasn't a selling of the company. This was a merger. He didn't technically make money off of this deal. It just saved him a spot in the company that he was getting pushed out of with other offers with people who actually had money, like Disney and Amazon, who said, we don't want Vince a part of this, and we're going to give big money. So it's it's all, it's weird all around. There's something definitely something fishy going on, and I don't know. I, I think... Before the end of the year, we're going to get a better picture on that and what that looks like and why he did what he did. Do you do you follow sports at all? A little. Like football? A little bit, yeah. So did you see that the uh, defense, I believe it was the defensive coordinator for the Chicago Bears, 
Mm-hmm. FBI just raided his home, I believe. I heard about that, yeah. Could you imagine, and I want to ask you this. This is my this is my push package refired for you. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Let's say the uh, the feds invade Vince McMahon's home. Give me three items you think they find that would be surprising. I don't, I have so many jokes, but I don't know if I can say them on the podcast, Scott. Um, steroids. <laughs> like, that seems like a tame one I can say. Um, mm, I don't, the love letters from Macho Man, probably those. <laughs> Are we going too far here? Uh, what else? Um, <laughs> a scene of blow up doll. That's all I got. I'll stop there. Um, and the blow up dolls just to practice wrestling moves, nothing else. Got it. Don't put me on the spot, Scott. I got scared. <laughs> very, very professionally said. Like, could you imagine <laughs> if we get if we get a notification or it breaks through whomever the source is that gets the information mm. that the feds raid Vince McMahon's home? Like the people, I would not go to work that day just to get the updates. Yeah, that's a big news day for us, pal. We're going to have to stay on top of that if that happens. Uh, This would be a fucking live stream if that happens. (laughs) Just live on CNN. Yeah, I don't... Do do you think we get a raid? Do you think it goes that far? I think it depends on, like, what what they're thinking he's guilty of Mm -hmm. and the sense of urgency to obtain any information like if they think he's at any risk of destroying evidence yeah they're going to raid his home but i do want to make sure that it is clearly stated on this podcast vince has not been found guilty of any wrongdoing everything is alleged right now he's a free man right now and that's all we can say for sure do we know his character yes absolutely but legally this is all that shit. And he just standing his podcast is not making any accusations. No. Besides the blow up doll that I said. But like I said, that's just for practicing wrestling moves, nothing else. Oh, 100%. Now, I mean, back on a, on a serious topic, like lo- looking at the, the stock WWE had and how good business was financially, mm. to say that they had plateaued, I'm not seeing it. Year over year. The numbers have been insane. The company is doing really well. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think he, like like we said before, it just seems like he's kind of trying to take the uh, spotlight off certain things. And what a way to do that. Well, I mean, again, not to cast conspiracy or throw any type of shade. Right. But remember when the, the steroid trial happened and Vince magically had neck surgery? Yeah, he was walking was around an... everywhere. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I That's, remember. That's one of my favorite Vince's. Vince and a do rag, and Vince and a neck brace are two of my favorite Vince's of all time. I want those action figures. Absolutely, Mattel. What are you doing? All right, pop somebody, get on it. The chase could be the neck brace. Mm, absolutely, because <laughs> he's harder. To, he's harder to catch that way. And once he gets indicted, those num- those are going to be worth a lot of money. So go ahead. Allegedly, we don't know. Allegedly. He might not get indicted. We don't know anything. But remember, like when when the steroid allegations happened mm-hmm. and the trial, there is the neck issue. Mm-hmm. Now with these indictments, magically this man had spinal surgery, and he's up walking around closing the one of the biggest mergers in the last twenty years. It, it's it's wild. I want to tie it to something, and, I, and if you see the connection or don't, let me know. Kind of reminds me of when a certain wrestler lost their smile because they weren't willing to uh, drop the uh, drop the belt. Kind of seems <laughs> correlated. Maybe Vince is telling people, handing out those type of orders, like, "Hey, man, if you want to get out of this, just make up a lie." <laughs> Not this is a lie. He that could be super terrible. I, I'm just saying, as somebody that that works in the hospitals. Mm-hmm. One of the hardest things to get your hands on is anything HIPAA related. Ah. And I'll leave it at that. Okay. I see what you're saying. I'm picking up what you're putting down. And man, like, if you look I at mean, Vince's... Vince can't because of the spine. I was going to I was gonna say, that strut of his, I believe it. It can take a lot out of him, man. That man is power walking them hips, which is affecting his spine. And that already took his quads. Mm. 
Mm-mm-mm. Well, do, do you... Do you... Go ahead. Do you think at all... Yeah. Going, going forward... That we get anything significant out of this? Like, are we going to get anything big? What do you... Uh, as, like, as do, do you think... With, with these allegations and indictments and all of this that continue to pile up, are they actually going to find anything? Because right now, this is just really circumstantial. There's really nothing concrete. Um, I mean, if you look at the accusations, this isn't the first of these type of accusations. These have been around since Vince has taken over the company, almost, it seems like. Um, but it kind of seems like all accusations... Um, and it's kind of hard to prove those things without, you know, physical evidence, the, the, the types of accusations that we're speaking about. So I wouldn't be surprised, as rich as he is, if if he gets, you know, I wouldn't say scotch-free. Um, I'm sure some, some money will have to be paid out. But, yeah, I don't I, – I think the home raid, I don't know if that's going to happen. I, I, I honestly think Vince is, business is going to keep going as usual, and I think that's a big reason. Because Vince isn't – dumb person he's just one of the smartest men in wrestling um so i think he knew what he was doing with his tko deal and endeavor so i think i think he knew what he was doing that's all i'll say i don't i think i think he's got it covered it's a great way to get vince out of the limelight out of the spotlight now you're talking about other things mm. but to, to say like back to that plateau comment mm. that was so ridiculous to to say that you've plateaued as a company when look even when when the booking was bad right and lackadaisical to be kind wwe still was making profits somewhere there's a lot of irons in their fire right to make money if if we were talking 2018 2019 it'd be a different story i'd be like yeah that makes sense the company wasn't doing well creatively um the pandemic sure didn't help things but, you know, once you got Roman in there uh, doing the bloodline thing, I mean, things kind of started to take off and have seemed to continuously take off all the way up to this year where they're reporting their highest gates for pay-per-views, um, some of the highest watch pay-per-views. Like, I, I don't understand the correlation, but... I'll give you, a, I'll give you a, a, a question I'm curious to get your answer on. WrestleMania 40. Mm-hmm. You, and I, it doesn't matter what night you put these on. If night one of the nights is Rock Roman, Cody John Cena, you bring in. I don't know if you really have to bring anybody else in with that. So say those are your two headline main events. Right. Would that be the highest grossing WrestleMania in history? We saw what happened last time Rock came back, and those were record breaking numbers unto themselves. Um, blood, uh, Roman Reigns, almost a bloodline. Roman Reigns is one of the biggest draws in wrestling right now, putting him against one of the biggest box office draws of all time. Yeah, I think we're going to see record breaking numbers, and we can thank Endeavor for that, to be honest, because honestly, the numbers were crap before this, and now <laughs> it's gangbusters. Well, they plateaued uh, before this. And then also we could get um, Vince versus the Feds on one of them. I don't know which one, you know, handicap match. <laughs> so he wrestled God before, so anything's possible. And one. And one. Keep that in mind, Vince. Accusations. That's all I can say. This is all alleged. Yeah, and you know, that's some more interesting news, though. Uh, mm. and I kind of want to segue to this. Guys... It'll be recorded tonight, but you will see it most likely tomorrow. Mike and a new member to Heated Shenanigans Podcast, Chase, are going to be doing weekly reviews of AEW Absolutely. Dynamite. Absolutely. And uh, he's actually, I just got news from it, he just had his third child. He's in the hospital, but he's still watching. Di Literally, this happened within the hour um, as we're recording this. And he was, he's still going to watch Dynamite, and he's going to do it live from the hospital. So if you want to see... A review live from my hospital tune in and there's some crazy rumors surrounding dynamite with potential debuts uh one being adam copeland edge which is something that a lot of people have been talking about but something that went under the radar recently is dolph ziggler's contract um his brother works for the company and posted a picture recently of both of them holding multiple aw titles could be just a little laugh a little haha -ha, but um 
possibly we could get Ziggs, the Zig Man, coming to AEW, which I think would be, I, I think a new coat of paint for that man could do him well. I would, I would also argue, look, I, I'm a huge believer in Dolph Ziggler. I think he has got all the talent and charisma in the world. Mm. And that is somebody, if you properly get behind, yeah, you very well could book that man to be a face of one of your brands. And I think if he does defect and he does show up tonight, again, nothing has been confirmed. Right. If that does happen, you could make Dolph Ziggler a strong player or the face of Collision. Now, while support for Dolph has died down, just based off the booking of WWE, it's kind of hard to keep rooting for a guy that keeps losing. I remember, this is around the time I got back into wrestling in 2012, 2013, there was a groundswell of support, almost LA Knight now-esque. You know what I mean? And if we could get that type of support behind him in AEW, I mean, it could be it could be really good. But let me let me pose this question. If it was a trade, which it is not, two people could potentially be going to AEW. Two people are going to WWE from each company. You have Brian Pillman Jr. and Jay Cargill showing up in WWE slash NXT. And you have potentially Edge and Dolph Ziggler showing up in AEW. Who wins that trade? AEW. <laughs> I don't want to say it. I don't want to say why. I'll just say I love Jen Cargill. She's she's amazing. She's going to be the next okay, She-Hulk okay. in the wrestling. Let me rephrase it this way. Right. As it stands right now, if that were to happen, if that was viewed as the trade, hmm. in the moment, AEW. It's not to say that Brian Pillman Jr. and Jade Cargill cannot become top megastars of WWE. Right. But currently, you look at the career Edge has had, you could add up all three of Ziggler, throw him in there as well. Right. They're not touching what Edge has done in professional Both wrestling. Both are world champions. Both are world champions. Uh, I mean, people might not remember, but Zig, Zig's held it, man. Um, I be, But WWE does get the youth, the more younger uh, two members, so... But I think the splash, if if they wanted to, because AEW did have a pay per view where Daniel Bryan and Adam Cole both showed up the same night. They can repeat history tonight at Grand Slam in New York, and man, it's going to be exciting. So stick stick around. Um, you should be seeing it, like you said, tomorrow morning, whatever, and we'll talk about it. And either way, there's some great matches on the card, even if no one shows up. So it'll be fun. If if Dolph Ziggler were to show up, we'll just do Dolph. Who does he feud with? Who's Dolph the first? coming out of the gate, man. Well, I think if, let's say, they both show up, right? Because I think Edge is probably most likely going to do something with Christian, right? Mm -hmm. Which is fine, and I think they could do amazing story. Christian's doing amazing stuff in AEW right now with dissing everyone's dead dads, which is... I, <laughs> the fact he's gotten that over is amazing. Send him straight to the top. He doesn't have to win immediately, but him and MJF, I think, could do some some really good stuff. I think Ziggler is a really good heel. Uh, MJF is doing some great baby space stuff as, you know, our scumbag, and I, I would like to see that. He doesn't have to win it, but he could. He could. Have you, have you seen any of the uh, the comedy stuff Dolph Ziggler's done where, like, where he's insulting, like, other comedians? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if anybody's writing this for him or if he has the ability just to just say it on the fly. If he does it on the fly, it's really impressive. But he's really quick-witted when it comes to those jabs and verbal shots. And a feud with MJF would Oof. be spectacular. And that's the thing, man. And we, we, we've talked about it on previous shows before. The AEW is a great place for people who don't need restraints. Dolph Ziggler is one of those guys. We've never seen him off that leash. The matches that he could put on with that amateur wrestling background could be phenomenal. Like you said, the wittiness. He is a stand-up comedian for a shoot. So I would love to see him in AEW, man. Like, it, it could be great. This could all be hearsay, though. You know, that he could he could show back up on SmackDown this Friday. We don't know. A contract that is coming up that I didn't tell you, but I just found out about before we went live. The big pale machine Sheamus. Contract's up twenty twenty four. What are we do you think there's a possibility? That's a that's a trips guy. That's a trips guy. Through and through. Man, I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, you you look at the direction that the company is going to go because that's going to be getting into WrestleMania season. Mm -hmm. 
And I, Sheamus has always been a solid guy to turn to. He has always delivered when you put him in any angle. I think that would be a big loss to WWE losing Sheamus and a hell of a gain to whomever picks him up. I would love to see Sheamus in a G1 tournament type situation. Just get him in there with guys throwing on banger after banger because within the last year or two, he's proven himself to be that guy, which he wasn't known for before. He's put himself in that position as a go-to guy to have banger matches. He even says it kind of cornerly as a catchphrase now, but he does put on great matches. And if he feels like he was slighted for not being the one to beat Gunther's streak while giving him the best match during the streak, which I think everyone would agree upon, maybe that's a good enough reason for him to walk. But let's talk about a contract that is not up and someone that was saw today at the Performance Center, Randy Orton. Uh, there was... <laughs> There was a lot of talks that he was done. And so I'm just, for one, I'm happy that he can get back in there and train um, and potentially get back in the ring. What what say you about this, this sighting? I think this comes at a perfect time for Matt Riddle. Mm. Somebody, I I look, I know Riddle's got those allegations going as well. He's kind of found himself in a little bit of trouble, but Randy's always a good, a good acquisition, no matter when, like, Absolutely. You put Randy on any show, Randy's entertaining. He's a good worker. One of the best that we have seen out of WWE in a very long time. Bonafide, multiple-time Hall of Famer. You could put him in with Legacy, Evolution on his own. Right. Randy has just checked all the boxes. I'm, I'm more than excited to see him come back. And something that we had talked about before was... Let's bring it up. One of his old, speaking of legacy, uh, stable mates, Cody Rhodes, we have said, what is he going to do? He's been a little stagnant storyline. He's getting back into the Judgment Day stuff, which has been going on since Mania. Like, let's move on, and this would be a perfect way to move on. Uh, Randy Orton, or have him feud with Rhea Ripley. I think if we're talking money feuds, get Rhea in there with Randy. That's what I'm saying. Do you... Do you feel Randy Cody is mania worthy? Absolutely. With the with the right story, absolutely. If we don't get Cody finishing the story, which God forbid, I know you don't care, but God forbid, we don't. Where is he? Oh no, I lost Cody. If we don't get him, and then mania, I think that's a that's a great that's a great story off the name value of Randy Orton alone and the story that they have to tell because I think it would be great. 100% agree. Well, as we come to the twilight of the episode, Mike, it's time for our favorite closing segment. Mm. Push, package, refi- fire. Not refire, fire. <laughs> refire! Bring them back and send them back out, Jack. Uh, let's go. You brought up a stable name. This sparked this. This is all off the top of the dome. Um, let's talk about evolution because it is a mystery. Three guys. Flair, we won't include him, but push repackage at their height, Batista, Orton, and Triple H. So if I'm cutting them, this is at the time of evolution. This is like peak evolution where everyone's still in it, yes. I'm firing Triple H. No, there's no other option. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. What impact! It was TNA at that point. It wasn't that's, even that's it. That's insane. It's you with Jeff Jarrett for fucking twenty years. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Th- that's the safest time to fire him. Where's he going to go? Yeah, There's not no... for him, for the company, yes, but not for the man Paul Levesque. No, it's not safe. I, you fire yeah, Triple H. Go ahead. <laughs> you push Randy Orton, and you repackage Dave Batista. Actually, I would send him back as the muscle for Devon because that was a lot of – there was untapped potential with Reverend Devon and Deacon Batista. Look at – go back and look – and we'll re, one of these episodes, we'll review okay. Reverend Devon's run. But that run was very underrated. That's certainly an option. I don't know if he could be a main eventer under that gimmick, but I, I don't think that – I don't think – Fire and Triple H is so wild to me. Because that man still had another like 10, 15 year run in them. Um, would I, let's see, would I do the same thing? Um, 
you can't fire Orton because he's the youngest, and he's st- he's still going to this day. <sighs> so we're gonna fire Andy Orton, push Batista, and repackage Triple H. You want to hear a crazy stat? Yeah. Speaking of evolution, you know, out of all four of them, Ric Flair's had the most recent match. It's funny the day after that, Randy Orton shows up <laughs> at the performance event. He says, wait a minute, I can't. I'm still in my 30s here, guys. I believe. Is he in his 30s? He's pretty young, right? He's like 37, 38. Orton, I think Orton. he's in his 40s. Let me, let me double check real quick. Uh, just I, think, I think Orton's like maybe mid 